Greetings, everyone. Welcome to E&E Learning Hub. I'm going to go through and explain the solutions for question five from the 2019 CSEC Electrical and Electronic Pass paper. So let's begin. Part A. It says, make a neat sketch of the current voltage characteristics graph for each of the following. Part one of A, an ideal diode. All right, so this is the graph for an ideal diode. Now, for the ideal diode, when it is conducting in forward bias, it behaves like a perfect conductor. All right, for the reverse bias, it behaves like a perfect insulator. It doesn't allow any current to flow through it. All right, so that's it for part one of A. For part two of A, a practical diode. Now, with the practical diode, during forward bias, it actually takes some time for the diode to start to conduct. All right, so it is not the same as the ideal diode. Now, during reverse bias, after some time, you have current flowing through the diode, small amount, and this current is called the leakage current. Also, it has a breakdown point, which is right here. And at that point, you have the breakdown voltage. So for the practical diode, during the reverse bias stage, it is not a perfect insulator. During the forward bias stage, it is not a perfect conductor. All right, so that's it for part two of A. So let's move on to part B now. So it says, describe the operation of a practical diode when it is part one, forward bias. Forward bias or unconditioned is established by applying the positive potential to the p-type material and the negative potential to the n-type material, which allows the electrons in the n-type material and the holes in the p-type material to recombine with the ions near the boundary and reduce the width of the depletion region, which allows the current to flow. So this is how the diode operates during forward bias. All right, so for part two of B, reverse bias. So if a voltage is applied across the PN junction, such that the positive terminal is connected to the n-type material and the negative terminal is connected to the p-type material, the number of positive ions in the depletion region of the n-type material will increase. Also, the number of negative ions will increase in the p-type material. So the net effect, therefore, is a widening of the depletion region. As a result, no current will be flowing. So this is what happens during the reverse bias phase. All right, so that's it for part two of B. So let's move on to part C. So it says, using simple sketches to support your answer, outline how an ohmmeter may be used to determine if an unknown transistor is PNP or NPN type. All right, so here are diagrams. All right, so for NPN, so if the red lead is connected to the base and the black lead is connected to the emitter, or in other words, you can say if the positive lead is connected to the base and the negative lead is connected to the emitter, this will give a low resistance reading. All right, so as seen on the diagram here, so as you can see, the positive lead is connected to the base and the negative lead is connected to the emitter and you have a low resistance reading on the meter here, all right? So if the connections were reverse, where the red lead, which is the positive lead, is connected to the emitter, which is right here, and the 
negative lead, which is, which is the black lead, is connected to the base, it will result in high resistance reading. And that's how you'll know it is NPN transistor. All right, so let's move on to the PNP transistor now. All right, so again, if the black lead, which represent the negative lead is connected to the base, as it is shown right here in the diagram, and the red lead, which is the positive lead, is connected to the emitter, and you can see that in the diagram here as well, it will give a low resistance reading, All right? But if the leads were reversed, where the black lead or positive lead is connected to the emitter, as can be seen here, and the red lead or the positive lead is connected to the base, you'll get a high resistance reading. And that's how you'll know if the transistor is a PNP. All right, so that's it for part C. So let's move on to part D. So it says a given transistor has a collector current IC rating of 2.5 milliamp when its base current IB is 40 microamp. It says determine part one, the emitter current, i.e. rating of the transistor. So IE is equal to IC plus IB. And that is 2.5 milliamp plus 40 microamp will give us 2.54 milliampere. Part 12D says to determine the common emitter current gain of the transistor. All right, so current gain is equal to IC divided by IB, and that is 2.5 milliamp divided by 40 microamp, and the gain is 63. All right, so that's it for this question.